So we're demonstrating the uh, utility of our commander to more fully investigate the nature of these supposedly linear relationships here in our inner model. And we're, we're focusing just on one here, trust. Trust is predicted by both telepresence, and I know it's kind of hard to separate these, but the estimate for the coefficient is 0.1293. It's also predicted by perceived social presence, and this is the coefficient up here, 0 0.304. So let's look at both of these relationships with scatter plots, and then we'll run our own models in our commander. And we should get the same coefficients when we do a linear or a multiple linear regression of trust on telepresence and trust on PSB. We should get an estimate of 0.129 for this coefficient here, an estimate of 0.3044 for, for this one up here. Okay, so we go back to, uh, well, here it is. We're at PLS GUI. We open up our commander, and um, let's pull up the uh, graphs again. Note, every time I create a graph, it refreshes this screen, and the old one's gone temporarily. You can save them if you want, but we'll come back to that another day. So, again, uh, here is um, the graph. Just We'll just do the scatter plot of trust by telepresence and have to go look for it um, oh <laughs> it's right here okay definitely again uh, not linear let's 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 reverse that okay we switch the axes here so let's go back to it again so we'll say um, scatter plot we want the y variable to be to be trust, and we want the x variable just like the regression. It really doesn't matter. You get the same relationship, but even though the plots might be different. Okay, so and so here's our you got to resize, jiggle it a little bit to get it fresh. That's definitely not a linear relationship. Okay, that's the one from trust to telepresence. How about trust to PSP? Okay, so we go back to our commander and let's draw a plot of that one. Graphs, scatter plot, the y variable again, trust, the x variable, uh, PSP. Come over here, jiggle it. Also, not linear. This is a classic uh, quadratic. A U or a hump are square. You need a squared term is what it indicates. Okay. So probably need to introduce a squared term for trust and a squared and a uh, cubic term for, uh, I'm sorry, a squared term for PSP predicting trust and probably a squared and a cubic term for telepresence predicting trust. I can refresh this graph to get our original line plot back by just redoing the PLS like this. I'm going to move it just a little bit. Oh, it's over here. I'm sorry. Okay, so this is linear. Now we're seeing that probably telepresence has a cubic relationship with trust. BSP probably has a squared relationship with trust. We can check that out in our commander. This this is really the beauty the beauty of this. So let's do this. Okay, so we come back here to our commander and we will create a model. Let's clear all this out. All you have to do is right click and say clear window. Right click, say clear window. Put your cursor in there. Right click, say clear window. Okay, so we're going to create a new model. So we say statistics fit models, and we're going to make a linear regression, which is what we're starting with. Our predicting, sorry, this is the response. Trust, this is trust. You can only enter one here. The explanatory variables are telepresence and PSP. Make sure we got them both. We did, okay. Telepresence and PSP. Okay, so we say okay. 
and um, we'll overwrite the model. That's not a problem. And we see, note, first of all, it does estimate an intercept, but we get the same estimates for the coefficient on PSP, which is 3.3044 according to our PLS uh, software. And uh, the coefficient for telepresence is, this is to the 01, is 0.1293, which is the same. So we get the same thing. Okay, but really we, we don't want that intercept in there. So we, you can get that rid of that very easily in our, uh, we don't have to redo this. All we have to do is redo the model. So, and we're gonna call this model something else. We'll call this basic reg, basic regression. This will be our baseline. PSP plus tail, you just say minus one to suppress the intercept term. That's all you have to do. And uh, so we submit that, and then we, to see the results, we'll use the summary function here, basic reg. And so here it is without our intercept, and there are coefficients that coincide exactly with what we have in PLS. And we see there, PSP is highly significant, tail uh, marginally, but still significant. Okay, but tail probably is cubically related, if that's a word. So how do we do this? Okay, well, that's our basic reg, our basic model. Let's create, um, we'll call this one reg1, and we'll introduce uh, squared terms because we think they both need squared terms. That's what we saw in the plots. Uh, PSP, telecommunicate, telepresence looked like it needed a cubic term as well, but we'll say, uh, we'll add PSP squared, and, and I appreciate this model editing takes a little training, but really not much. I can show you how to do this quite easily. And uh, so there's the squared term for PSP. This just means as indicated. I'll t we can talk about that later. But uh, And then we need a squared term. We're trying to capture the true relationship for these paths. They're not linear. We can see that in the plots. So, And that really goes to the heart of what we're doing. We're trying to understand the relationship between the latent variables, right? And the PLS software that we're using is in incapable of actually modeling that uh, nonlinear relationship. Uh, even, even, even the software, and I, I know Ned Koch very well. He's a great, brilliant guy and a nice guy, and his software work PLS is wonderful. It's limited. You can do squared functions and cubic functions, not both. Well, you can do both, but, but that's about it. With our commander, you can do logistic fits, you can do Poisson count fits, you can do mixed models, There's, you can do anything with, with your results, with your latent variables. Okay, so let's finish this. Okay, so all I've done is add a squared term for both PSP here and for telepresence here, and I left the intercept out, and we're calling this reg1. Okay, so I submit that, and we want to see the results. So we come down here, and we say, make sure we have the right model. So we say, what's the results of that? And I, I needed to rewrite this. You, you need to have the lower order terms first. So there's PSP without the intercept. This suppresses the intercept telecommunications, a telepresence, lower order term. Then you add the squared terms. Okay, here's telepresence squared, here's PSP squared. So we run this. We run the model. LM is a regression. That's all it is. Ordinary least squares regression. It's the exact same function that PLS performs on your latent variable scores, and that's what we're using. So I run that. Let's say, let's look at the summary. Okay, we go down here and look at the summary. Now we find... Uh, PSP still highly significant, telepresence, uh-uh. Squared term of telepresence, yes. 
Square term of PSP, yes. Okay, but what we what we really want to know is how does this compare with the uh, with the basic model that we just we just estimated? Well, we can do this actually through the menus, or we can do it manually. Let, let's try the easy way. Um, it's models. Uh, hypothesis test compare two models so we're going to compare our our basic one basic is the first model they have to be nested for this to work by the way and the second one that we just created okay so we say okay and they are different uh, they're significantly different. We're, ta we're testing what this uh, uh, statistic is. It's a chi-squared test of the null hypothesis that there's no difference between these two models in terms of their ability to predict. And this is saying there is a difference. When there is a difference, you want, you, you want to choose the more complex model. If there was no difference, you'd choose the least complex model. We see our second model has a has a smaller residual sums of squares. Uh, we can query the AIC as well. Let's do that. So if we said, let's see, I think we can do that through the menus as well. Yes, we can. AKEQ criterion for, for uh, let's choose the right model. For the basic model, AKEQ criterion is 642 for the more complex model that is nested, it is lower. So this is clear evidence that the second model is better. So let's let's go let's go on with this. So we'll edit this model and we'll put in the cubic term uh, for for a telepresence. So we make the more complex model, the active one, uh, it's right here. Okay, all we have to do, we can edit it directly, and we'll call this new one that we're creating. All we're doing is editing it and putting in a cubic term for telepresence because it was indicated in the scatter plot. And so we can also look at the diagnostic residuals. We'll do that in a second. Okay, so there we've introduced a, a cubic. So we have a cubic, a U-shaped for telepresence, for the effect of telepresence on trust. And we have a just a squared for the U, PSP. Okay, and we call this right. We submit. Take a look at the summary. Um, some problems, but we can compare. Again, the idea is to find the best fitting model, not to pick through these coefficients and see which one is significant. We can directly compare the two using the ANOVA function, just like we just did. So we say uh, models, um, hy hypothesis tests, compare two, and now we're going to compare reg one and reg two. The only difference between these two is reg 2 has a cubic term in it for telepresence. Say OK. Now we find they are not different. Okay, so that's indicating that uh, with respect to the multiple regression, with respect to this part of the path model, you're better off fitting both of these. It's a better fit if each one of these are um, have a squared term in it. Now, you can take this one step further. You could also individually model this fit and this fit. And really, that's what you should do because um, you, are, you are fitting each individual line. I didn't want to do that because we would, have got, we would have resulted in different coefficients here on the linear fit, and that would confuse everybody, including myself. So, but you'll find that really the best fit for this one is cubic, and the best fit for this one is a squared term. We're missing the boat doing these linear fits. That's the point. R Commander, very simple tool. 
once you get a little training and enables you to fit different models. Okay, we can do one other thing with our commander that we cannot do with um, uh, with the uh, basic PLS path modeling software, and that is we can test these fits based on the diagnostic plots. So let's make our best fitting model the active one, which is reg one, and then we will go up here and we'll say numerical diagnostic. Um, We'll say graphs, models, graphs, basic diagnostic plots. And it pops out here in PLS GUI. Um, again, not perfect, but it's, it's the best fitting one that we have available. So in summary, our commander really enables you to fully investigate and to, to, to compute to perform not only these quadratic fits as we demonstrated, but you could do general linear models. You could have a binary model that's your predicted variable, which you cannot do in uh, Smart PLS or any PLS path modeling tool. You could have longitudinal studies. You could have mixed effects models. You could have generalized additive models all are easily estimated within our commander using your latent variable scores, which is, which is what the, the path modeling tools do. They compute the latent variable scores, and then they just simply run a linear regression. This is, a, this is really uh, a lot of leverage to, to really get at the truth in these relationships and new, new publishing opportunities.